I'm Ellen McCauley. I am at the Pray It Off Catholic Weight Loss Group in Syracuse, New York. And tonight we're going to talk about how easy it is to gain weight, how hard it is to lose weight, how hard it is to keep it off. And you know, it's interesting. I've been running this weight loss group for 15 years. And people don't quit the group because uh, it's too expensive. <laughs> Be because it's free. And, and it's in a pretty good location. Most of us live here. They don't quit the, the group because it's at midnight, because it's at 6 o'clock. They don't quit the group because uh, I, I go on and on and on past 7.15 at 7.30 and they just want to go. No, it starts at 6.00, it's over at 7.00. You know, they might quit the group because I bug them a little bit, but... I challenge someone to talk for 15 years about losing weight and still make it interesting. I challenge someone else to do that. So they might want to quit because of me, but I don't really think that's the reason. People quit because it's hard. People quit because they get sick of even thinking about it. I don't want to think about losing weight and keeping it off. I want to go into that fugue state where I have the blinders on. And, you know, one of my, my grandmother always said, you know, whenever she saw a chunky person, you know, they'd have to be pretty chunky because our family was always chunky. They had to be chunkier than us. She would say to me, that guy's digging his grave with his fork. <laughs> and, you know, how many of us, are digging our graves with our forks sometimes when we're like more and more and more gimme 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 and that is where we have to come up with the stick to it tib ness there's nights i don't want to come there's nights where i get I have a bad night's sleep bob and i got the flu shot and the fifth covid boost the fifth covid shot which was the one to third booster we got them both at the same time on monday the next day I woke up, I'm like, Duh. you know, I still went to work. You know, all week long we've been a little loggy. Uh, but the thing is, I'm still here. Stick to it, Tibness. That means dogged perseverance. And it's the quality that allows someone to continue trying to do something, even though it's difficult and unpleasant. It is unpleasant not to lay on the couch and eat ice cream all the time. But what happens is you get fat, you gain weight. And when we gain weight, our clothes don't fit, our blood pressure goes up, we get adult onset diabetes, yada, yada, yada. So how do we uh, get through this time where we have to talk about stick to it tip -ness? Well, let's talk about that tonight. So the first article I want to mention is how to keep weight off do's and don'ts. And you know, it always starts out with enough sleep. And you know, it's funny because, remember I told you that I got Bob a Fitbit because he wanted to measure his sleep and I'm like sleeping and I'm getting, the scores are in the 70s and every day he's getting in the 80s. Well, a couple weeks ago, his Fitbit wasn't registering his sleep. And we did everything. We rebooted it. We went back to factory set settings. We deleted the app on his phone. I was Googling like crazy. So finally one night I said, let me wear it. So I wore my Fitbit on my, on my left arm and his on my right arm. The next day, it was the exact, almost exactly the same, RAM and deep and time. But my score was a 73 and his score was an 83 oh. because men if they have the same quality of sleep as women it's better for them so actually i'm having good bob sleep but just not so hot ellen sleep you know? <laughs> and the funny part is as soon as i did that and gave it back to him it has started to work again so every once in a while you just have to have your wife wear your fitbit so then you can wear it but the thing is i found that fascinating that men's quality of sleep is that that much different, I guess, than the women's. I guess they want us to have more REM or more deep or whatever. I'll have to research that someday. And then it says 60 to 75 minutes of moderate exercise every day. All through the summer, when I gained 19 pounds, I exercised every day. I, I think people think when you gain that amount of weight that you're sitting around eating every pizza and wings and everything. 
and that you're not exercising, that you're laying there watching Netflix, it is so easy to lose weight and gain weight, and we're going to talk about that. Also, it talks about another do is new healthy foods and recipes. Nothing I like better than trying something new that's healthy. You feel like you discovered the Holy Grail. I'm like, oh, this is delicious. I love it. You can eat a few of your high calorie foods, but in moderation. That might work for some of you. It does not work for me. Last week, I gained no weight. I mean, lost no weight. This week, I didn't have any fruit all week, and I lost two pounds. That's the only thing I did differently. Now, that person who bought me the, uh, brought me the apples, never fear, I will have a few of those, because I love those Honeycrisp. Also, don't give up the first time you put back some of the pounds. I figured it out that I started gaining weight when I was 12, during puberty. So, I went on my first diet pretty much at 13. <clears throat> that means that I've been on and off a diet for 55 years. <clears throat> I mean, it's stunning when you look at that. No wonder it's hard for me to lose weight because my body's like, what do I do here? I better hang on to this stuff. I don't know what she's going to do. Also, it says don't skip meals because you might be hungrier throughout the day and eat more. This doesn't count for people who are successful with intermittent fasting. Also, if I were to ask the people in the group how many of you have had a failed attempt at losing weight, I don't think there's anyone who wouldn't raise your hand that you've had one or more failed attempts. Does that, 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 make, does that make a stop? No. Also, it says, don't fear the scale, weigh in at least once a week. I really think once a week is the, the way to do it. And if you want to do it at home, I can't stop you. I don't live with you. I'm not there going, hey, get off that scale. <laughs> I think once a week is important because your body changes throughout the week. What you weigh, and I've said this maybe uh, a million times in 15 years, what you weigh buck naked at 5 o'clock in the morning is going to be different than what you weigh at 6 p.m. at Pray It Off. It just is. But if you take the weight you weigh here and you use that as the starting point, it's consistent throughout time. Eating out. Oh my gosh, some people eat out every day. They eat out like it's their job. And you know, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful that you have the resources, the time, the energy. But if you treat every eating out like it's a treat, well, I'm eating out, I'm having dessert. I'm going out to breakfast, so I'm going to have toast and jam and pancakes and frittata, and I'm going to have it all. But this is the fifth time you had breakfast out this week. Is it really a treat? Now, I went out to breakfast on Sunday because I had to bribe Bob with a few things. Breakfast, any woman who wants to bribe a man, say, honey, I'll take you out to breakfast first. And he's like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> you bribe a man with breakfast, he'll go anywhere with you. So. We went to Stella's for the first time after 7.30 Mass. And my greatest fear was that everyone from 7.30 Mass who knew me would go, what are you eating? Can you have that? I have seen people in restaurants from the group, never once have I commented on anything they've ever eaten, never. I've never said, you don't need that toast. What do you eat? I don't even look at their food. They're out. But believe me, that is not, I'm talking not even prayer offers. I'm talking people who are three pews over who know I run the group are like, what are you eating? Is, can you have that? Is that on your plan? So the good news was no one from prayer offer or church or anyone I knew was there. And so I ended up getting a, a vegetable frittata and I said, could I have a takeaway dish when you bring it? They brought the take home dish and the frittata, and I had it Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday. I had that frittata for four meals. Wow. Mm -hmm. Four meals. That's what you do when you go out to eat. You still get what you want. Why is it so hard to keep the weight off? Your brain and your body are hardwired to regain that lost weight. They're hardwired. That means it's in our DNA. Genetically, we are pre-programmed 
to try and regain every pound we've ever lost. Because our bodies are the same bodies that the cavemen had, that people had in the Irish famine. That's why there's more chunky Irish people. And I'm serious. Because so many of us lived through the Irish famine and now our descendants are like, we can't starve. I'm kidding, I'm not kidding. Our metabolism slows down. <laughs> Our brain senses that our fat stores are low and sends signals to the muscles to become more efficient, meaning they're not going to burn the calories as fast. In fact, people who lose just 10% of their body weight, so let's say you weigh 200 pounds and you go down to 180. Now you need to eat 20% fewer calories forever, forever. So, uh, if you've lost half of your body weight, if you weigh 260 and now you weigh 130 and you've lost half your body weight, that means for the rest of your life you have to eat half as many calories as you were eating to lose weight or, or eat to get there. So, I'm not saying you're eating 10,000 calories a day to be fat, and now you have to have 5,000 calories. I mean, if you consistently were eating 1,800 and you were losing weight, and then you plateau, you've got to drop it down to 1,600. I can stay the same forever by not eating anything wrong. I mean, just fruits, I mean, just vegetables and protein. Our bodies want to stay right where we are unless you've been on a diet and then it wants you to go back to where you were. Your appetite increases, you think about food more because you were in a mental state of deprivation and you, you're at the best possible scenario to regain the weight. After you lose weight, your energy stores, your fat deposits decrease. Your hormones signal the brain that your fat has gone before uh, below a critical level and then we become less our muscles become less active we experience increased hunger because our bodies are saying you better eat you better eat and we have less restraint when eating and you know you would think that people like us who already know what's going to happen mm -hmm. would say okay i don't need a third piece of pizza because I'm just going to gain weight, but we want it, we want it, we want it. And then, well, like I said, we, we uh, um, burn fewer calories. Now, successful losers, I told you you got to move every day. And, and we're going to talk about walking in place because it is my go-to. And my Fitbit says my heart rate gets in a critical zone. You can walk in place, no equipment no gym, no treadmill, and get your heart rate up. Limit television watching. We only watch TV. We watch Jeopardy and one show, because we work. You know, and on Saturday and Sunday, we might watch a movie. So we're well below that 10 hours of television a, a, a week. But there's some people who are watching TV like eight hours a day. You're not gonna lose weight that way. They, they, I'm, I'm serious. If you consume 1,380 calories per day with less than 30% of calories from fat, that is a successful loser. I'm telling you right now, when I read your logs, you're, you're, you're having 2,500, 3,000 calories a day. And then they say to eat breakfast to curb hunger if it works for you. Also, um, your emotions. Uh, we try to talk about stress, we try to talk about anxiety because so many of us are emotional eaters. And then it says to weigh yourself once a week. I'm going to stop right there, Bobby.